Um, some students were um, reticent about putting themselves forward. Um, we've got um, students to see the benefit of networking at events, um, but some were still holding back. Um, you know, students had got all the usual lessons about CVs and all that kind of thing. Um, but we wanted to provide a, a place where students could provide a shop window for them using this visual space, uh, regardless of whether it was networked with social media. Um, and I was surprised just how you know reticent some students still were to um, to do this. Now, whether it was a question of them having to address what their identity was um, and how they were going to represent it, I thought people would want to be showing off because because we were all so connected on Facebook already, I see just how much you know students are uploading pictures of themselves all the time on there. Um, but they were, you know. What made the difference was once one student had done it and started tweeting about it or, or putting it up on Facebook, you then every, you would see a burst of activity because other people would feel they're being left out. So um, I found that students tended to be led by other students once one had done it, there would be a burst of activity, then it would go quiet again. So it, it would happen in stops and starts. Some groups tended to be quieter than others, so I would need to have some extra encouragement with groups to, to get them to, to do it. Um, but um, it seems to be working quite well now, I think. We, it's, we have a course um, in the year three which we do called um, Delivering Professional Practice which is all about what, what is professionalism, you know, and we very much put the student centre stage, you know, what is professional practice to you, you know, and what we've seen is that um, those that have put this, that put themselves up, are the ones that have used that to question or to reflect on what it is they've done in that course. So there's one student in particular that I know has toyed with ideas about, you know, professionalism doesn't mean wearing a suit, keeping to the rules, you, know, you know, the phrase she's used is, you know, it is about breaking the rules, you know, that is what being a good professional is, because if you just stick to the rules, you, you might do something that you shouldn't be doing because you should have questioned that, you know, so, and you, the, the best creativity comes from those who, you know, push the boundaries. Um, so, I think what it's helped to do is enable students to see that um, professional practice isn't something that's separate, that you just, you know, when you're going to work, you take a coat off and hang it up, that actually being a professional is about an expression of you. And so it's, it's helped them connect because they see their face up on the screen. They realise you can't run away from it, you know. Um, social media has helped that in a way as well because being on Twitter, um, and connecting with some of the guest speakers that have come in and that kind of thing, students have seen that you know professional practice is it's 24 hours a day, you know, and the visual identity thing has really sort of helped with that as well. It's, it's helped them see that there is no separation between the two. Um, obviously, yeah, there are some differences between outside work and being in work, but that the idea of professional practice should be something which goes around with you all the time. So I really think the image stuff has helped with that. Um, I think there was a, there was a, I'm trying to work out the proportion split, but there was a split. I mean, there were, there were those that are using it all the time and were real natives with it. Uh, and then there were others that needed more of an induction with it, particularly with Twitter um, and Pinterest. But they tended to get that earlier on in the degree. So by the time they're in their third year, for example, they're, they're pretty um, uh, confident with using it. Um, but we found that our students were being represented pretty well. For example, the, the, the main student blog in our discipline uh, does a lead table of um, activity on Twitter. And one of our students, Joe, who's here, and Nara have always done pretty well in that sort of top 20 um, using the, the main sort of um, uh, representative tools like Clout. Um, our students get picked out for the blogs that they're using uh, and writing and how they're representing themselves. Um, and most of the industry people that come in are always picking up on how well our students are uh, using Twitter. Um, so they're all using Facebook, all of them really, but it's Twitter, 
um, is more of a is more of a, is often more of a learning curve during the degree. Yeah, I'd found in previous working experience when I was quite young, probably about five years ago, and I did work experience in PI, I didn't know what it was. But some people were taking pictures of, at events and networking with others, and I saw other people going out to photo shoots. So it kind of gives a sense of what it's going to be like working in the industry once you graduated. And also by networking with these people, you might get the opportunity to work with them in the future as well. So um, maintaining these relationships are important to you. Yeah, I agree with the networking aspect, especially with Twitter. I mean, we'll, um, I'll be in direct conversation with some of the guest speakers like that include Mark Bukowski and uh, Karen Triggs and some quite Im important people that you'll be sort of having a, a Twitter conversation with about, about the lecture. So I think that's an important aspect of it. I think just because um, obviously with my personal Twitter, I can just write anything and not really have to think about how it comes across or spelling mistakes or grammar whereas with this it's a real practice because you need to kind of analyse each tweet before you send it and have a real think and read over it a couple of times and I think that's a good practice for if I ever do have a job where I do need to do that and I'll, my, if I do I'll know that I can't make that sort of mistake. Yeah when I had to tweet from my work experience in the summer I had to like literally check five times that it was correct and the links were correct and the grammar was correct so it's a good representation of what you will be doing in the future. But to be honest, no, we, I mean, we've had odd things like when we had the, um, Andy Parfit come in to speak and he, he didn't want his event podcast and so he didn't want anything shared on Twitter. So uh, we had to ask the room not to share, you know. So that was another lesson for people about when not to talk about things. Um, and so the same with the cameras. But I think but if you're on a public relations course, you're already thinking about those issues. and. Um, it, it had just got to a point where I think before we had the cameras we weren't trusting our students enough to put these ideas into practice because if we weren't doing this, if we were letting a student graduate and go and work in an agency or in-house somewhere and they hadn't used a camera like this, we were going to be plonking them in at the deep end where they hadn't considered these issues, which is even worse really and you know that has reputational issues for the degree as well as for the students. So. Um, I, I really don't have any issues because I have real faith in all of the students and what they're doing um, and it seems to have worked so yeah.